All right, welcome back, everybody. Joining us now, Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky. Um, so, Senator, thanks for coming back on. I look at um, sure. first question I want to know is uh, how is your staffer? I mean, you had somebody who apparently was brutally attacked in broad daylight over the weekend. Uh, how is the staff person, number one? You know, I think he's, he's doing a lot better. I visited with him in person yesterday. He's still in the hospital. He still may have some more surgery to undergo. Uh, these were life-threatening injuries, but he's a young, strong man, and I think he's going to make a full recovery. But uh, without immediate help, he might not have made it. So we're you know, very happy that the first responders got there, the police got there, and uh, you, know, you don't expect something like this to happen in broad daylight right outside of a restaurant. Senator, I, you know, I, I hate to raise this whole thing. I like to talk policy with you. We'll get to that in a minute. But you yourself were attacked pretty badly, as I recall. Um, and I'm just, you know, is this a pattern? Is this politics here? Is this normal street crime? As I recall, was your neighbor that went after you? I mean, what's going on here in your judgment? In this case, uh, the, the attacker, I think, was unknown and was uh, not related to politics. But it's, it's evidence of the danger that all the people in Washington are living with. You know, these cities are mismanaged. People don't seem to be too concerned. And this is terrible. And this is happening to other people around the city as we speak. So we've got to do something about crime in our major cities. And maybe the people who live here ought to reassess, you know, who they have running the cities. I mean, frankly, crime has run amok in so many of our big cities. Uh, but really, we're focusing mostly on just uh, getting him out of the hospital, getting him better, and we're glad that he's making progress. All right. Well, our best regards to him. Thank you for that. So let me switch gears. Um, this is a weird story. Matt Taibbi, who is not a big right-wing conservative movement activist, was visited by the IRS out of the blue. I think it was the day of or the day after he testified before Congress. And Taibbi had the Twitter files. Okay, we know he had the Twitter files. And all of a sudden, the IRS visited him. What do you make of that? Well, it's probably a coincidence, Larry, just like the coronavirus beginning in pandemic where they keep all the coronaviruses. No, I think it's suspicious and it ought to be looked into. And it wouldn't be the first time that a presidential administration had an enemies list. But it's concerning, and it's concerning that if you speak out, you become a target for your own government. So I think without question, these kind of uh, things where it appears as if a journalist has been targeted for their viewpoint or for their testimony or perhaps punished for their testimony, it absolutely needs to be investigated. The question is, can we trust the Department of Justice? This is the same Department of Justice who's completely ignored the Hunter Biden scandal and the malfeasance and the criminality that he's been involved with for years and just sat on it. So, so many of, you know, people around the country are saying, my goodness, it seems to be a double standard. You know, if you're a Republican, you're treated one way. If you're sympathetic to speech and to what's going on and you want to expose what happened at Twitter, you're treated, you know, another way. So uh, I think we have to get to the bottom of this and make sure that we actually have equality before the law and not a law that's being uh, targeted in partisan fashion. You know, isn't this, I mean, this kind of sudden visitation to Mr. Taibbi by the IRS, by an IRS say, isn't this exactly what people feared when we put all the new IRS agents, I don't say we, when the new IRS agents passed the uh, Biden budget? Isn't that what people talked about? Haven't we seen this politicalization of the IRS before? I meet people every day who are afraid to participate in politics and don't participate any, anymore other than voting, but they don't contribute because they're afraid they'll be targeted by the government through audits. It's also, you know, they tell you um, when you have these scams online, like if you get a text message and they say it's the IRS or the FBI, most people in government tell you they never call you and they never visit. So it is extraordinary for the IRS to actually visit someone at their house because it never happens. And it makes me think that someone had a special vendetta or a special animus towards uh, this reporter. And without question, this is the worst of government, uh, our government at its worst, so it has to be investigated, and I, for one, will push to find out the truth here. Speaking of worst government moves, so you may have seen this story in the Wall Street Journal editorial, I guess it was over the weekend. Wall Street firm Goldman Sachs took a look at the misnamed Inflation Reduction Act. This is now becoming one of my favorite stories. And guess what? Those guys, whatever you think of Goldman Sachs, they got a couple smart guys there. 
They now say that bill, which was estimated at less than $400 billion, is going to cost three times as much, $1.2 trillion, for a bill that was estimated to be less than $400 billion, with deficit reduction supposedly built in. Now, I'd say that's a lot. $1.2 trillion is a lot, but three times the estimate. That's a lot, too. Yeah, it's, it's shocking that government estimators are off by a factor of three or four. It's also shocking that the people who name bills name them the opposite of what they're actually <laughs> intended to do. And so my father, who was in politics and in Congress for many years, he used to always say to me, whatever the title of the bill is, like the Patriot Act is the most unpatriotic of bills. Same with the Inflation Reduction. It's the Inflation Increase Act. It's the Climate Act. I mean, there are estimates now that over a trillion dollars worth of climate regulations and spending is in there as well. I used to love to interview your dad, by the way, just saying that aside. One last one. I mean, talk about, you know, misinformation. So Joe Biden will claim, I guess to his grave, that no one will pay higher taxes as long as they make less than $400,000 a year. Okay? So the tax policy center of the center-left Biden uh, Brookings Institute, I'm sorry, center-left, okay, they're not crazy, they're center-left, they have now estimated 111 million Americans who make less than $400,000 a year will, in fact, pay taxes as a result of these bills. Now, is that um, mislabeling, you know, untruth in labeling or something? Is that like the Goldman Sachs thing? Can we believe anything that comes out of government? I think it's like everything else around here. They try to sell things through class warfare. They have to tell you the one percenters and the top one percent aren't paying their fair share, which also isn't true. The top one percent pay about a third to a half of the income tax. Most of the income tax is paid by the top one percent. Then they tell you they're only going to stick it to the top one percent when in reality it's everyone. It's like these banks that have failed recently. They say, oh, you're not going to have to pay for it. Uh, the banks will have to pay for it. Have, they've never heard of uh, the banks passing these costs through to us. No, everybody that has a deposit in a bank is going to pay for the, the, the bad decisions they made at the Silicon Valley Bank and the Signature Bank. But we're all going to pay for it. But they're going to tell us we're not going to pay for it. And this is the dishonesty of politicians, basically. Senator Paul, last one. I just want to say, not only do I like people who are in the top 1%, I want to add to the top 1%. You know what I mean? I'd like to increase the top 1%. Make Absolutely. the non-rich rich. And another thing that's great about it is they're not the same people every year. There's a different set of 1%ers oh. every year. Right. And it's not based on who you know. It's based on how hard you work. All right. Senator Rand Paul, thanks ever so much. We appreciate it, sir.